is the f- <gasps> memes of the sister thing from that Russian girl anime? Yes. Yes. So the sister wants to bang the main character too? Not actually, but she loves making jokes about it. To the point oh. where most of the oh, wouldn't it be to the wild? point wouldn't it be wild if we just had like raw dog sex right here, Oni Chan? <laughs> Isn't that so kidding. funny? Like, it, it's it's to the point where she's basically <laughs> gaslit the anime community into thinking it, and it's it's great. It's so great. <laughs> Hello everyone, it is that time of the month again, time for Anime Club After Dark to pop a squad and hit you with all the best and worst of what we have been indulging in recently. I'm your host, Alex, but you can call me Senpai, and joining me tonight, I have our czar of source material, and his cat! Say hi, Terry. Say hi. You're oh. on camera. Oh, now, now she's too shy to meow. <laughs> yeah, now she's not going to be a little monster. <laughs> but before we started recording, she was meow, meow. Oh. Oh, oh, and oh, she's okay, gone. Okay, alright. Bye. And she's gone. Oh, you know why? Mm. She hears her mom. Oh, yep, I see. <laughs> and we also have our Viscount of Wild Pork, Chinoda. Please explain. Okay, hold like, on. Hold on here. Did you just say Viscount? Is that how it's pronounced? It's yeah. Not Viscount? No, it's Viscount. The S is silent. What? Okay. <laughs> All right. I thought the same thing for the longest time, bro. Don't His worry. Mind. Hold um, on. Hold on. What? What is this word of origin? I got now. I got to look it up. Is it freaking French or something? Is that why? I think it's French. Yes. Probably French. Everything's French. We're having a language lesson here on Anime Club After Dark. At <laughs> yep, it's French. All right. Wait. Side tangent. So before I went to sleep this morning. <laughs> oh God. You had a dream in French. I. Were saw... you Frenching? another anime that was like oh, I want another Chateaubriand steak and I'm just like this is the third time anime has referenced Chateaubriand steak and I don't know what that is I've never seen this at a restaurant before it's good and because of the the naming convention Chateaubriand I was like okay it's obviously French right yeah but I see filet mignon at a bunch of restaurants but I never see Chateaubriand so I'm like what is Chateaubriand and apparently, um, it's from the tenderloin cut. So it's, like, so it's just filet mignon. It's like, no. Apparently, filet mignon is the last, like, the very end of it when it goes into the cow. Like, the closest to the center of the cow. Yeah. Where it's only at max two inches thick. And Chateaubriand is after that, which is three to four inches thick. It's like a little mm -hmm. circle for the tenderloin. And I'm like, huh. So I've never had Chateaubriand. But just like, I was like, who... Who in the French fuck would be so obnoxious to be like, there must be a cut named after me. And obviously, it was a philosopher and politician from somewhere, from Chateau, something Chateaubriand. I'm like, wow, this is so pretentious. I hate this. So the French. <laughs> the yeah, French. so French. I like the French way of like how they live life. Um, you live, you work to live, not live to work. I, I really do like that. And you oh. throw a bathtub through your prime minister's window. <laughs> I mean, the the Olympics sounds like an average ended. Tuesday in Paris to me. So the Olympics um, just ended, right? And it was in Paris this year. Yeah, uh -huh. and that's why everyone was pooping in the river or something to protest. <laughs> Wait, what? So uh, I'm not sure how many people know this. We are all on such a tangent to start I know, this shit. I know, but I have to talk about this because when I heard that. It was trending on Twitter where the French were, like, pooping the, the river. And I was like, what is this? And then I learned about it. I'm like, oh, they're pooping in the river to protest the French government because they're like, hey, there's so many things wrong with our country right now that you're not fixing. So we're going to go poop in the river to make you look bad for the Olympics. But uh, when people get to host the Olympics, they generally will enact a bunch of sweeping programs like just kind of sweep away the nasty poor people and the bums and stuff like that and instead of fixing any economic issues inside of their cities or countries or anything like that they focus all their money and attention to supporting the olympic games so and what it does to a bunch of towns like it brings in a lot of business during the event but it mm. just leaves it all desolated afterwards like there's no aftercare or anything like that so all these the infrastructure like when they uh, did the olympics in rio i believe like all the infrastructure yeah. there just got abandoned because so, it's like it's not supported for anything 
So I'm going to push back a little bit on this because I know it depends on the country, the government, and the local government. Because depending on the place, a lot, uh, a lot of the more civilized countries uh, tend to hold up the arenas and the areas where they hold the festivities. And uh, he said that civilized with a hard C. Oh my God. <laughs> They tend to support it, and uh, it tends to have a normal revenue, normal business cycle, um, all that such. There's a lot of places that are still kept up to date and still use, uh, being used. So it depends on the government. I will say that. I know the Olympics are coming to L.A. in 2028, and the, the, the city's waiting. like, we're going to reuse a lot of this stuff anyway. Like, we're not building a whole bunch of new stuff. We're going to reuse what we already got. Yeah, they're using... Um... Using SoFi Stadium SoFi for a lot of Stadium. stuff. That's what it was. And they're was using like, the uh, the LA Coliseum as being used for all like the track and field and uh, gymnastics or not. Gymnastics, yeah, so they already but, have a lot uh, of stuff built, so that doesn't matter. But yeah. they will probably enact sweeping um, the poor programs like they normally oh, absolutely. do. Uh, so I'm like, good luck getting Skid Row to move. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder how that's maybe they'll have out. maybe they'll have the pentathlon go through there and make it really exciting. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh, no, no. Just, uh. just, as you as you turn on the skid row, you get handed a gun. It's like good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to America. Just give them this a dirty, is American running. <laughs> give them a dirty used needle. Like, look, they got the same as you. Like, this is a competition. <laughs> all right, it's fair. Don't worry about it. <laughs> anyway, how is um, that skinny anyway. man running so fast? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It's just a cracked out person running through. Bro, just so just shoot up with fentanyl to go do the the marathon. It's oh fine. No, terrible. not Fenty. That is terrible. We're we're terrible people for making these. We are. We are. Uh, anyway, I am kind of um, looking forward to the Olympics in America though again next uh, next time. I might I go. Don't, I don't. I don't care. Anyway, this is so <laughs> far removed from what we're talking about tonight. This is back uh, to. Month Back to my, my introduction. Thank you. Oh, very much. Yeah. my bad, bro. <laughs> I, yeah. I I squirreled so hard, man. You did. Um, uh, it's because <laughs> it's because my grandma just came back into the country and she brought some wild pork uh, hey, from Sri Lanka. Yeah. So, hey, yo, is is for us really good, buddy? It's for us, buddy. <laughs> You're going to have to come over because I'm not saying <laughs> that out. Uh, <laughs> it's really right. good. Well, uh, getting back to what we were actually going to be doing tonight. Uh, yes, this is monthly dump number 15. Uh, we are going to be talking about some of the stuff we've been watching, reading, all that all that good stuff. Um, I'm going to start off with show and tell because I have, I have show and tell with me uh, today. Um, this guy. So uh, the Spice and Wolf remake... Uh, anime is obviously still going on um we're at episode 19 now um and we just got confirmation from the people who uh are making uh this adaptation that we are actually getting an adaptation of volume four of the light novel um this volume was skipped over during the original anime adaptation um so this volume has never been animated before i'm looking forward to this um there's not a whole lot of like massive story stuff that goes on in this volume, but there's a lot, and I mean a lot of world building. Yeah, in we this, meet in this um, two new characters, right? They're the ones in the yeah. intro, the new intro. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty big. Yeah. Um, I also I brought this out specifically because Volume Four has one of my favorite illustrations in the entire series, with uh, Smug Holo. <laughs> smug Holo. <laughs> the smug. <laughs> um. Yeah, I this this adaptation man is so good, and it's 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 making me realize again why I love Spice and Wolf so much. Yeah, I I was thinking about Spice and Wolf um, again as I always do, as I was frothing at the mouth waiting for episode nineteen because they didn't release for like two weeks, and I was like, "Where's the next episode? Yeah, I need to see the ending of this fucking hate of Monty. Get that guy out of here, <laughs> <laughs> dude." Yeah. Fuck that kid. I'm glad you're enjoying it though. <laughs> I, I have to say, the people that are making this, I, I can tell it's being made with love. Right. Yeah. I, you know, when I first saw the redesigns, I was like, I don't know how I feel about that because I did like the original anime designs, but I've mm. realized that the light novel designs are su vastly superior. They look I, way better. Right. Right. Look at it. It's so cute. Yeah. It's like it's not 
<laughs> it, it can't, it's like I lost I, I lost my rose tinted glasses and I was like oh god animation from back in the day kind of looked bad didn't it <laughs> these these didn't look as pretty as I thought you know it's funny you say that because I have this sort of nostalgia for like 90s character designs a lot mm-hmm. I love like the way character designs were done in the 90s and I still do but I have to say going back and re-watching some older anime from especially from like the mid 2000s to like early 2010 that character design that a lot of anime were going for then has not held up very well yeah the transition from like realistic drawing to moe blob was kind of a rough one (laughs) to be honest yeah until we finally got to like where we are now where it's like beautiful moe blob and it's like okay this is highly refined and great but the transition to it was kind of eh, to but. to be fair i think that moy blob can work in like slice of life stuff and just like ishike stuff yeah but in general that design does not work like across the board no I mean, no not at all in shows that don't it doesn't really matter like i'm thinking about lucky star right like going yeah. moy blob with lucky star or the big guys or kaon it's like it's fine because it, it doesn't matter too much about the design other than like oh it's cute girls doing cute things uh, yeah. As long as the content is novel, then who cares? Yeah. But for Spice and Wolf, I was thinking about, like, man, if I had never seen Spice and Wolf, like, mm. I still wrestle with the fact that, like, I have seen the original Spice and Wolf, and I absolutely adore the original Spice and Wolf. It's one of the few first Blu-rays I ever bought of my of anime of all time. Um, like, the first one I bought, I believe, was Clannad. The second one was uh, Black Lagoon, and I'm pretty sure the third one was Spice and Wolf. Bro, I have a funny on story that about one because it's out of print. I have a funny story about the the Spice and Wolf one. I'm not sure if I told it. Maybe I told it a couple years ago, but I bought it at this electronics store, the Spice and Wolf Blu-ray. I've heard this story. But and it's a good one. Go on. I'm just like, oh, there's anime being sold at this electronics store. Let me go check it out. And I see Spice and Wolf, and I'm like, oh, sweet. I love Spice and Wolf. Season one and two. Like, I'm gonna buy it on Blu-ray. And there's something inside of the sleeve, and I'm like, what is this? So I, I pop it out, and it's a piece of cardboard where someone was freaking quoting the Bible. It's like <laughs> Leviticus 13.3 or something. Like, like, he who stares into the abyss is staring at Satan or some shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> who did this? And and then I'm like, why would they put this inside of this specific anime? Because I, I looked around, like, all the anime cases around there, and they didn't have any of these in there. I thought maybe some... Um, religious nut job did this but they specifically put it in the spice and wolf which is about a pagan god so i'm like yeah. okay you know what the content of this story is so are you not sinning by watching this story to tell me that <laughs> i'm sinning like i don't understand here you watched it about a pagan god but buddy buddy you can't call out their hypocrisy they get it mad was when you just do that. weird bro i'm like who who in their right mind did this like I, what the hell bro i now but anyway. i don't I don't know this for a fact, but I think one of the reasons, besides the fact that it's mostly world building, that Volume 4's content was cut out of the original anime adaptation, was because there's a lot of religious stuff in this. There's a lot of world building with the church. Oh. So, uh, get ready for that. (laughs) I mean, I'm pretty excited, but... So does that mean the original one, uh, the original run adopted Volume 1, 2, 3, skipped 4, and did 5? Yes. So uh, the first half of season one was volume one. The second half was volume two. And then the first half of um, season two was volume three. Second half was volume five. Does that mean, are we getting a volume three and four instead for the second half? Are we, are they going to I'm assuming that's what they're doing for the second half. I don't know exactly how many episodes they're going to use to adapt volume four. um, Because I will say. Because they only have four episodes left, right? Uh, yeah, uh, four or five. Um, I can't remember exactly how many episodes it's going to be, but it's like it's either twenty four or twenty five episodes. Um, but if they go through this really quick, then we might get through like halfway through volume five. Oh, wow. I would hate that though. I don't want them to leave off in the middle of a freaking volume. That sucks. I mean, they might do like a longer adaptation of this because I will say the pacing for this. Um, this new adaptation has been sort of more or less stable with the original adaptation. Hmm. Um, so, so I don't know. We'll yeah. I, I feel like if anyone hasn't watched spice and wolf 
and for, you should first of all they should just just go watch it like watch the new one the remake is phenomenal it, it hits every single part that the original did because it covers and the my exact god same kevin pink and score the, is oh my god the ost is beautiful the the art is beautiful there is bad cgi but i mean it's not used a lot so who who really cares like it, it did not matter i'm glad that we're not coping and seething at this yeah. point <laughs> in time yeah. like when, when i saw the trailer like two uh, two seasons ago, I was like, "Oh boy, look at the CGI horses and people." <laughs> oh, and I will say, even though the CGI in the show that we've seen so far hasn't been the best, it's better than what we saw in the trailer. That's for sure. Um, oh yeah. Ugh, Are you okay there, Chino? Do you, you want to try that whole sentence uh, again? Yawn. Uh, is it actually better than the trailer? Yes. Yeah. Way better. Oh, okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I would recommend anyone who hasn't watched Spice and Wolf go watch the remake at the very least because it's yeah. you're not going to miss anything like sure if i don't even feel like we should do a compare and contrast because like the remake is everything everything about the remake is superior in my opinion yeah thus honestly far. i do want to do a spoiler cast for spice and wolf once the this season is finished there is one thing that i didn't think was superior though one thing. what the ending song for the first half. <laughs> it was not i love claris don't get me wrong i love those girls but the original song it wasn't ecstasy fueled like it, it, craziness seven apples on the witch's tree you know <laughs> seven it seeds was to plant inside of me <laughs> whistle around the world is so good bro i can't get <laughs> it out of my head oh, oh the drug trip yes yes oh, that song was literally so co-written by ecstasy wolf inside of girl and they say and off I go from June to May. Oh, whistle round whistle the world. Whistle round the world. <laughs> that song is so good. Uh, yeah, that's all I got really for this. I'm I'm still super enjoying this remake. I'm glad it's being made with love. And I'm also glad that we'll see volume four. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely animated for the first time. The people have uh, the people who are remaking it are uh, it's Passion, right? Uh, yes, that's the studio that's doing it. They are doing a bang up job, bro. Like I, I didn't think <laughs> I didn't I didn't think it would get a good adaptation just because of the trailer, but thank God it was wrong. Because <laughs> <laughs> I do like Spice and Wolf. Um, I didn't want to see it. Like you know, again, even if it was bad, I'd still watch it every week, and then I'd die a little bit of a little bit more every time <laughs> inside. While just watching like when it, you're like, oh. just like when you're watching Berserk 2017 or 20, whatever it was. 2016. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Every I die bro oh i die every single time um <laughs> you know what other anime that makes me die inside a little time every time i watch it Freaking what is that we i talked about it last monthly dump but failure frame is actual dog shit bro. oh my god it's like, so bad so i talked about the bad cg because i think i kind of like the story still though <laughs> so i i remember we talked about i think only up two episodes had come out at that point right yeah last time yeah Okay, thus far, I think there's like four other episodes that it's been a month, so four more episodes have come out. And there's actual like fucking sound balancing issues. There's actual like production issues with the actual production. So it's not just horrendous CGI. Also, they use CGI in the weirdest fucking places. Like there's one scene where Toka is like, um, he's sitting down in his bed at the inn. And for whatever reason, everything's hand drawn and he looks at the book, it's hand drawn. And then he, like, gets up and, like, moves slightly. They turn it into CG for some reason and then go back to being hand-drawn. I'm like, why? Did that actually save you money? I don't fucking think that saved you any fucking money, bro. That's some bullshit. <laughs> what was the point of this? So many questionable decisions that they like, did. I I think that there's good use of CGI, right? Uh, CGI, when you use CGI in a show, it helps really animate, like, we are in a room. It's good for action sequences. It's good for grand scale of things you know like you can have shows that do it very well there's a show on my list that i want to talk about later that's all in 3d and cg and it looks great like i know an anime recently well recently in air quotes um that did cgi really well because number one it used it sparingly number two it used it how cgi is supposed to be used for grand scale like action like yeah to for, to basically for showing be like far we are away. a set on a room like yeah to use cgi it's like it's good for if you're like pretending you're in a room and you're trying to do action cam stuff yeah like rotate around and watch this fight unfold like you know the john wick fight yeah. in john wick yeah. 2 where him yeah. and um catwoman uh, holly berry <laughs> yeah, yeah holly berry 
uh when him when those two are fighting and it's like we can watch them both fight and we're actually tracking all of them moving throughout the coliseum when they're doing it and it's like that's so cool dude that's an action yeah. shot like we're actually it feels like we're there watching them tracking them the entire time <laughs> You can use CGI for that, and there are a couple anime that do that very effectively, very well. The, the Legend of the Galactic Heroes remake a few years ago did that really, really well because they used CGI for the uh, spaceship battles, and yeah. only for it the looks spaceship battles. So good, yeah, it looked amazing. And it's just a shame that this adaptation is taking forever to get finished. And we've talked about uh, Premiere, like it uses CGI, and it's good damn CGI because it's highly stylized. They simplified everything and made it effective. It's a, it's about how effective you are with your fucking media. Yeah. This show, Failure Frame, does none of that. It's I have no idea. Why is it? They would you decide. say it's a failure at framing? It's a failure at a lot of things. The anime, <laughs> which is so sad, because the story is actually pretty good. I was actually surprised at how well they um, are getting me to hate, like getting me to feel like I, the the main character is right and he should just go kill everyone. Yeah. Um, like I actually feel empathy ah, for some of these characters. Is the thing. Ah, genocide. Listen, it's I was genocide. so I was so upset, upsetty spaghetti. With Failure Frame, the anime, I said, fuck it. I'm going to go read the manga again. <laughs> so I picked up the manga again, and I read it. Then I said, fuck, I'm out of manga. You know what I did, guys? <laughs> I'm re I'm currently on chapter 259 of the, the web novel. Jesus Christ. <laughs> this guy. Why do you do this to yourself? That's you bring this on yourself. The last couple of days, just reading. I've been, I'm back to reading, guys. <laughs> Because I was like, this show is actual dog water, so I'm gonna go and read the source instead. The good and, stuff. And for those, for those, for those who aren't in our Discord server and want to see these rants in real time, John provides them gratis <laughs> at no cost at 3 a.m. in the morning when I'm just sitting on the toilet on my yeah. break. <laughs> Got to get it all out. Yeah, in more ways uh, than one. <laughs> yeah. I I, I'm still gonna watch the anime just because, like, I I I don't know sunk cost fallacy at this point. I don't know, but yeah, it's like bad CG, bad audio balancing for whatever reason. Like there was that one now, scene where I thought for a second I went deaf in one ear because yeah. like it goes from like is it that bad? Well, it, it goes was from, that like, bad. Normal volume to like super quiet and then back to loud, and I'm like, it's like they they accidentally. Like, whoop, we turned down the game. Oh, shit, guys, we turned down the game. Then they overcompensated and we're like, oh, like shit, Like, live, live editing the audio. <laughs> I don't no know, bullshit. Dude. It was really that bad. Like, I talked yeah. to John about it, and we were both like, what the fuck just happened? I had to do a double take because, again, I was watching it passively because if it's a show I don't really give two shits about, I'll watch it passively where I'm like, oh, I'll just practice my Nihongo and occasionally be like, I didn't understand that. Maybe I'll go back. But when that happened, I thought I, you know, sometimes – I'm not sure if you guys get it where all of a sudden just like a ringing happens in your ear and you go like momentarily deaf. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have so, tinnitus yeah. in my left ear. So yes. So that happened. So I, I went momentarily deaf. So I was like, did that happen to me in my left ear? And I'm like, I look over and I, I go back and I, I listen to it again. I'm like, nope, it's just it's the anime. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? Do you know what the you know what the worst part about that is? Having like hearing problems, especially in one ear. If you hear a loud sound, like if I hear a really loud sound on my left side, it like really fucks with my balance. Oh, I have no fun. idea why that would happen, but yeah, I, I don't, I, I'm not expecting very much from Failure Frame the anime. Uh, I will say after being like maybe I'm on season three if the anime gets up to a season three worth of content. Oh uh, man, that shit is hype. <laughs> uh, this story is really about revenge. I'll say that much. Um, revenge, some yeah. good old revenge porn. Oh, it's it's major revenge porn. But you actually feel good for the hero and like the, the people that he's saving, compared good, to good. the redo of Healer, where I don't feel good for anyone involved. <laughs> I I don't think you're supposed to feel good about the people in that show at all. Yeah, like no redeeming, and I mean the show itself is there's nothing redeeming about it. So whatever. I, it's there's funny. One re, there's one redeeming thing about Redo of Healer. The character designs are pretty good. That's about Too it. Generic as fuck, bro. Hey, listen, Tell me the, the lycanthrope girl girl's name. What is the lycanthrope girl's name? I don't remember. What's the pink <laughs> hair bitch? Uh, I don't remember. I, Flare! Listen. Is, is it as that what it is? is it I Flare? think her actual Flare. name. Wasn't that her name? I don't remember, That's what man. I thought. <laughs> What's her sister's name? 
She had a uh, sister? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I remembered the characters. I know the characters. Just, I don't like, remember... just like me with Marco and Attack on Titan. So who's Marco? <laughs> who's Marco? I, I don't remember any of the character names. I remember there was... I remember the characters, like these characters exist in the uh, series, but I don't remember their names. Hmm. They actually, I remember one character's name. His name was Bullet, because I'm like, why is he named Bullet? Her name is Flair. Fuck yeah, I was right. <laughs> oh yeah, I do remember Bullet, because uh, Bullet had a companion named Blade. Bullet and <laughs> Bullet Blade. Bullet and Blade. Hilarious. Also, there's just a character randomly just called John. <laughs> just... I will say about Failure Frame, uh, I was actually talking to John about it, and I decided to check out the cast, uh, like, not cast, uh, the staff, to see who did this, like, what kind of mistakes were they making, like, what were they behind? Turns out, they've actually worked on some, like, pretty good name stuff, and I'm just like, guys, what the fuck happened? Like, how did you yeah. fuck so up the thing so is, bad? The writer and the director are, um, pretty veteran they're they're veterans of the industry they're vets yeah um they've worked on a lot animation of... guy too yeah but it's like the problem that i see with failure frame is not a problem of like the story is still good it's being adapted really well like from a story standpoint it's the um the key animation when they do animation looks good there's nothing wrong with the directing this the writing or the adaptation or the um, animation, like the key animations, like the actual animated parts, not the CG parts. The problem is that whatever production committee sits on here, obviously is like, hey, we need to save money, so we have to budget on this one area. It's it's suffering from a lot of cuts in different places. Yeah. Hey, here, and I'm not you entirely guys sure talk why. about it. That's what it sounds like. It sounds like it's being muddled by the production committee. I think that's what I think. I don't, you know, I, I have no idea, honestly. Um, I don't. <laughs> I'm not Nihongo Jozu enough to like ask for. Uh, I'm a. I'm reporting for a podcast. Please let me inside on your insider information. But to me, that's what it feels like, and it's a shame because I feel like a lot of people would enjoy this uh, revenge anime because it's it's a really good revenge story. Uh, it actually gets you revenge against people that you're like, man, these people should be fucking killed. So uh, yeah, seriously, you know, I am liking the story. It's just the anime is what's the problem like i'm kind of interested in reading the manga or even the web novel now because of the story like i genuinely like it it's just the anime is painful i would recommend at least checking out the manga um the web novel i believe is on chapter like 300 and something um last time i checked jesus and the the manga is only slightly further than where the anime is gonna end oh okay unfortunately oh, but... it's so dog shit chinoda what's uh what's something you want to tell me about let's talk about go something through his that's uh list. hey i kept it simple this time okay thank you you're welcome you're welcome bitch um let's talk about something that's not dog shit the Russian girl anime is pretty fun. <laughs> I like it. There's a great sister in there. <laughs> I've been seeing so many memes with this, like, incest anime, and I'm just like, is this... What is this? Uh, I don't know what this my is. <laughs> There's no actual incest in there. The, uh... So, the context behind that is the main character's sister just is into incest uh, as a fetish, and, like, she loves it, but, like, she's not actually into it. But because of how she is, and she's such a you know fourth-wall-breaking character. Do you know what's that... absolutely terrible? What? All I can think about is, like, I can I understand what this means because, like, Sydney loves NTR, but I'm pretty sure Gigguk's not a cuck, so... <laughs> <laughs> that, you, that you know of. That we know of, uh, but that just made me think of that. <laughs> Yeah, like a, huge okay, difference I, I in that. being into something versus like actually doing it. Or yeah, whatever. it's the I will say, yes. I'm not watching this, but I've been seeing obviously a lot of memes from this particular anime, and there was one which I I, I assume came from the most recent episode because I've seen it very recently. Uh, there's a character that appears wearing a shirt. Yeah, uh, anime characters wear shirts with just random wor English words on it, right? 
Yes. Uh -huh. This one has the word country on it. And there's a yeah. zoom in shot with someone's hand like over a part of the shirt. And it's zooming in over the hand, uh, like highlighting the letters NTR in country. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that actually happened. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, like this is, huh. I look at that. I'm thinking this show might be dog shit, but that's good shot blocking right there. It is not there. dog shit. Fuck you very much. It is not. I'm it's saying even if, fun. even if it were, even if it were like the most dog water shit I've ever seen before, it's like that's good shot blocking because that's a good visual joke. I might check it out, or I might just wait until um, Winter Comic Cat when all the dojins roll out. So. <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, the one will don't... come sooner than the other, <laughs> and then you will be coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a terrible joke! I'm sorry. Genuinely, though, um, no. So fun characters, uh, fun show. I, I, I'm really enjoying it. Surprisingly better animated uh, than I thought it would be. I saw that it... foot scene. Oh of lord. Course. Yeah, of I'm course sure you did. You I'm sure you did. Woo! Woo! Um a lot more fan service than I was expecting from it. So really? That, yeah. Really? A lot more No, I wasn't expecting any fan service from like the description I read and everything. I'm I, like, uh, from the art style alone, I expected Dojins to spin did, off from this. I did too. Oh, I expect the Dojins immediately. I, I, well, I say as if I haven't already seen a couple. Um, <laughs> After the first episode with his little sister interacting with him, I was like, all right, there's there's definitely going to be plenty of fan service in this. Because yeah. I didn't watch it. Just people on anime Twitter space were just freaking out. They're like, oh, this little sister, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, what is this show? I didn't know it was from here, but now I know it's from here. And, then, and I'm be honest here, Chinoda, you are 100% not selling me on this show. <laughs> Like it's got everything I don't want to watch in it, but now I want to watch it because I'm just like, okay, now I want to see just how it. brain rotted it is. Well, because oh, and... if I watch it, then I can shit talk it even more. It, there you go. That's true. It will I can piss me off. I can accurately stab you where it hurts. <laughs> He's thinking. He's thinking. But good, then you good. win the at the end because it's working. <laughs> the yeah, is, but then the it's the you win begun. anyway because then I watch it. So it's like you're manually. <laughs> this is why I hate watching doesn't work. This is why if you go hate watch something, they're going to make more of that shit. <laughs> I think I just um, have an incessant need to just shit on shows. Um, so. Oh, it, it, isn't just, it isn't just shows. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Um, and I will say the hilarious Japanese Russian it, it's you can tell it's kind of bad but it's so cute and I love it rush rushlish rushlish yeah Rush, sure I don't let's know go with it. I don't know what you call like shitty Russian backwards moon runes <laughs> backwards moon runes I guess some Cyrillic characters do look like moon runes yeah there you go I'm surprised you knew that it was the Cyrillic alphabet why? I, I don't know why I didn't think you would know that's what it was called. I don't know. He's yeah. a college educated lad. He knows stuff. I have a degree, my friend. I feel like a lot of people don't know that that's what it's called. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to tell you, man. That? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I've I like exceeded your expectations you stupid, or Alex. I've met them. <laughs> I don't know if you're calling you stupid. Yeah, I expected me by this knuckle dragging like caveman in here. You're from Florida. I had a good chance at that. <laughs> fair. That is a fair point. You live in America's Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> God damn. Better than living in America's trailer park, Ohio. <laughs> Hey, oh, man, chill, chill. Time. My sister's there. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> um, well, so I'm I know, <laughs> I, I, I know, John. That uh, I, I'm assuming you're done talking about this, right? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> good. John, I know that Chinoda wasn't doing the best job selling you on, um, on Russian girl anime. Allow me to sell you on a different anime. For I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the thing that's gonna sell you out of the way right up front. Okay. Um, I, Farouz, voices the main character. All right, I'm in. 
There you go. <laughs> <laughs> See that that is how it's done, Shinoda. You don't do the you don't do the synopsis or anything. Just tell him what he wants to hear. Yeah, who's voice acting in it? Because I I hate to admit it, but there's star power in the voice actors that you choose. I will watch yeah. a show. I will at least watch the first episode for people I like. I yeah. will drop it if the show is absolutely just terrible. Like that. What was it a couple seasons ago? It was like, um, I was gonna say Daisuke Ishiwatari. That's the guy who made Guilty Gear. Uh, no, no, freaking. Well, Sagita. there was that. Um, Sagita yeah. was in that one weird like anime that was just all symbolism about like being xenophobic. And yeah, I'm like, it's the firefighter uh, anime, right? It was like some. Fi- they, they looked like firefighters. They were like some special force. That oh, with the aliens. aliens. Um, I don't what remember. Was that what it was. I, I watched that garbage. Called. Hold I, on. I, I watched, why am I not surprised? <laughs> I watched two episodes, three episodes, and then I dropped it because I'm like, oh, I see all the symbol. I see the writing on the wall, creators of this show. You hate immigrants. You hate people yeah. who come to Japan who aren't Japanese. I get it. It's it's literally like that's the whole story. It's like immigrants are bad. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, like, I can. And we're not that joking. If- like, if you've never seen this, uh, Chinoda, I think, is looking up the name of that right now. But if you've never seen it, like, this is legit what the whole theme of the show and the story is. Like, immigrants bad. It was actual dog shit. Yeah, they used aliens, but these aliens are bringing in problems that they think foreigners are causing, like their drug problem and corruption. And I'm like, sure, sure, it's the foreigners doing this, bro. <laughs> sure, it's not your own yakuza whatever yeah. dude <laughs> um but yeah the one the, the anime i'm trying to sell you on is an anime called mayanaka punch or midnight, midnight punch. punch um very interesting little anime so far so i watched the very first episode of this um with chinoda um at otakon during one of our off days um actually i think it was on monday after the convention was over i think or, no, it was no, Sunday. Sunday. It was Sunday, Sunday after the convention we was chilling. over. We came yeah. back. Yeah, we came back to the hotel room and watched it. Um, this is an anime that Ida told me about because um, he really likes it and he's been watching it week to week. Um, I guess quick synopsis of the overall plot is it involves um, or it starts out with a group of YouTubers, uh, new tubers, um, and um, they've been making videos for a long time. They're very, very successful, but they have a falling out and decide to break up. And one of the girls goes off on her own and tries to have, like, a solo career. Um, And it doesn't go as swimmingly as expected at first. um, Because there's a lot of hate comments and she's blamed for breaking up the group. Right, Um, right. Like when JonTron left Game Grumps. Yes. Um, And she ends up coming across Ifruz's character in this, uh, a vampire called Live. And, or Liv? Live? they kind of alternate back and forth about whether it's pronounced live or live. Um, but anyway, and she, obviously having access to a vampire, she now has a gold mine of potential like content ideas. Okay. And so she ropes her and she ropes this vampire into um, like basically being the centerpiece of a new YouTube project. Mm-hmm. And she has a goal to reach a million subs. And if she gets to a million subs, she's promised this vampire to let her suck her dry in her own words. Why wouldn't the um, vampire just do that? Like, because she's a vampire. Like, <laughs> why would she have to fulfill she's this nice, promise? John. Oh, okay. I was just like, yeah, this is a, so I have questions. Mm-hmm. Um, so vampires aren't supposed to be able to see their own reflection. Does that mean cameras can pick them up? In this particular one, yes. Also, there's a very funny thing with garlic in this. Uh, this is mostly a comedy, by the way. Like, it's not. Yeah, supposed if to I be couldn't a tell. Story. <laughs> if I, um, if you couldn't tell, this is about a a, a new tuber. A new tuber. Um, so there's a there's a scene. Hold on. There's a there's a scene where one of the vampires, because there's multiple vampires. It's not just the one. There's a whole oh, fucking okay. family of vampires. Um, but one of them gets um, uh, garlic paste in their mouth. And garlic for them is like a drug. It's oh. not like so they get they go like on like fucking psilocybin acid trips when they have garlic. You know, I feel like you shouldn't have explained any of this to me because the more you explain to me, the less I want to watch it. All you had to do was say I for his voices, and like I would have checked it out. That's all you had to say. It is pretty funny so far. I've only watched I... the first four episodes, and it's 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 entertaining for what it is. It's not super I, serious, I and it's fun. I, I might. 
Is it is it on yes. Crunchyroll? Is it? Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, let me ask this: it, it, Is uh, episode three what Ida was hyping it up to be? Uh, like, was it, it is really pretty. That... I mean, it has it has its sad moments. I think he was really talking about episode four. Oh, okay. Just wanted to ask that real quick. I, I do plan yeah. on watching more of it. I've watched episode two as well. Yeah, I might. Uh, I'm only watching like I think eight shows this season, so I, wow. I have plenty of. Because there's nothing good to watch, bro. This season kind of weak. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I, I will say. I will say. So far, like I said, I've only watched the first four episodes. Um, but it's touched on some stuff that like actual YouTubers, I think, feel like burnout. Um constantly focusing on all the negative comments you get on your videos yeah because it's really easy to like ignore negative comments um i forgot who was saying this i think it might have been connor or ludwig or i think it might have been ludwig or something Mm. but someone was saying like it's really easy to ignore hate comments that don't really mean anything like them just saying just random shit because they hate you but it's another when they hate when they point out something that you also didn't like and they they noticed you like know? a character flaw or something like not just a character flaw but like if you did something in the video where you didn't like that you had to do that but you did it anyway mm. or um that you got this thing wrong and you, you felt bad about it but then it's like the people point it out and like you're a fucking idiot and this and that and it's just like you're so yeah. uneducated i can't believe you'd say that and it's just like well fuck i feel stupid now so yeah. I, I understand like uh, it's it's easy to say ignore the hate but there are certain comments that will just trip you up. Be like, "Fuck, they got me, yeah. dude!" Like, "Fuck." Well, I mean, I, even this guy fucking uh, got me. About a year or so ago, Kiara was talking about it on one of her streams. It's like, you know, all the um, all the positive comments and stuff, and all the love that I get shown. It's great. It, it's fantastic, and I love I love reading it. I love interacting with you all. But all it takes is that one comment that points out like how bad your voice sounded or how you weren't on top of your game that that stream or you know it, all it takes is that one comment to have all that good feeling that gets built up over sometimes days or weeks or even months to just drop it all back down to zero yeah like i i'm not sure if you guys have ever worked in um cut well you have you worked at a retail store uh advanced auto parts I have. yeah uh retail but i have or customer service, I should say, not just retail, but customer yeah. service type of job. I remember I worked at a uh, a phone. It's been over ten years. It's been over. I worked at Verizon uh, at the call center <laughs> one time. Uh, I learned quite a lot about Verizon's towers and like about the cell phone industry as a whole, like the uh, the broadband industry as a whole, and um, how scummy it is. Oh, it's super scummy, dude. But I I would do. They wanted one call to be completed within seven and a half minutes or shorter and they would pay you more money if you could get calls down from seven minutes so the more calls you took per hour the more money you were making they would pay you like Mm. minimum wage at the time which was i think eleven dollars an hour in uh, my state but i would try to like facilitate people as fast as possible like pull up their information get them in and out in and out so i could make more money and i would have like maybe 50 to 75 calls that would be just like phenomenal you know i'd be like for two hours straight just like oh i didn't have a problem customer at all then i would just have one fucking shitty customer where they're just belligerent as all hell and it's just like dude you're ruining my fucking day you're ruining my numbers first and foremost that this (laughs) this seven minute call this five minute call really should have been uh done in or this seven minute call should have been done in five minutes but you're now you're making it 45 minutes because you're being an asshole you're ruining my numbers. Yeah, like, not only are you ruining my numbers, you're also just being a belligerent asshole, and I can't fucking hang up on you. And it's just like... There, there was actually a trick that I used to do uh, if I didn't want to talk to people. So, I'm not allowed to hang up on you, but I am allowed to keep repeating, I'm sorry, I can't hear you right now. Uh, please call us back at this number so I can throw you back into the queue. <laughs> So someone else can deal with your Because it's okay for them to hang up on you. <laughs> yeah, so I would pretend, if you were an asshole customer, and I'm like, I don't want to deal with this person right now, I would just pretend like I couldn't hear you through my headset. I'd be so apologetic, like, and I'd tell huh? them, Huh? Speak up. Please, I can't hear you. I'm so sorry. I cannot hear you right now. I think my headset is acting up. Please call us back at our um, contact number, 1-800-whatever. And <laughs> so I just kicked their ass back in the queue. Now, granted, if you did that, it, it was basically just a waste of time. But I was like, look, even if I got the complete, you already ruined my number, so I don't want to deal with you. 
it'd be better to drop you after 10 minutes than it would be to hold on for another 35 for numbers sake just from a purely numbers yeah. sake absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. i didn't do that all the time like i said I, I only did it to people who are just like completely just terrible fucking people but just. but all it took all it took was one call like that to ruin your whole day yeah ruin it would your just mood. ruin my like i said i would be gr- doing great for like two hours having good conversation with a lot of people and then just one freaking person just one would just be the worst fucking person i've ever dealt with uh not not actually but like just bad just a bad interaction where they're just like mm. they're fidgety they're yelling at you they're making it seem like it's your fault because you know that's the thing about customer service jobs you are the face of whatever company you are the service of yep. i don't make like obviously me being paid minimum wage i'm not the one who decided you should be charged 75 more cents for your phone bill this month okay i am not that guy you can yell at me all you want that's not going to change the fcc a uh, fucking fees that n- change every month on your phone bill i have nothing to do with i cannot do anything for that no one can at the company that you're calling into can okay mm. that's stuff that you go lobby congress to go change just say for 75 cents bro <laughs> Granted, i understand there is a i remember there was an old guy that called in about like two cents his bill was two cents higher but the thing is for verizon if you are a, a longtime customer like 10 plus years you're vip like we will comp you up to like 500 dollars every time you call in just because wow. you've been around for so long i had a customer that yeah. was like 25 plus years with verizon i'm just like holy shit this guy is vip he gets everything he gets the most premium rates off for his phone his trade-ins no questions asked about any insurance claims like nothing it was crazy you know what's crazy is my parents recently got to 40 years with AT&T. Holy shit. They had, now, they had, they had, they've had the exact same phone number for 40 years. I don't know about other phone companies, but at least when I worked at Verizon like 14 years ago, uh, 13 years ago, they did pride themselves on being um, 100% American run. So all the call centers were in America. And... Um, it was outsourced, so it was like I worked. Technically, I worked for Xerox. Uh, that was huh. the company that was paying me, but I was a call center for Verizon. It was weird. It was a very weird thing, but it was technically a Xerox. I was working for Xerox, uh, not Verizon. I was working on the behalf of Verizon. Mm. But Verizon only outsourced their jobs to American call centers, and they prided themselves on being the best customer service of all the phone networks, and that was a hundred percent true. Based that's on my true. training and yeah. all the stuff that they let me do, 100%. And that's why I've never hated Verizon as a company because I'm like, you know what? You guys might be part of a scam. Like the entire broadband business might be an entire scam in on it together, all in bed with each other. But at least Verizon has always treated me great. Whether when I worked for them or as a customer myself for Verizon, they have always treated me great. And that's what good customer service will get you. Lifelong customers that will now go on an anime podcast and glaze the fuck out of us. <laughs> He's definitely not getting kickbacks from Verizon. No, not at all. Not at all. Oh. Um, so, anyway, my knock and punch is pretty good. <laughs> oh, man, we're talking about anime. Oh, man, I'm treating this like a WTF. Uh, yeah, yeah, I you- might check it out. I'm, I'm not watching too many shows this season. Uh, but, you know, thanks to Verizon's new... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <unknown package. laughs> oh, <stop. laughs> I'm sorry. I saw the I saw the segue. I had to do it. God damn it. Okay, oh, do it. All right. Uh, speaking of, well, G-Q-A. hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, the anime you were talking about is called the Marginal Service. Marginal uh, Service. Yeah, the shitty freaking xenophobic one. And some of the other star names, other than Sugita, is uh. Miki uh, Shinichiro, the guy who played Kisuke Urahara oh, from Bleach. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. And this is going to kill you a little bit. Fucking Mamoru Miyano. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's right. Miyano was in it too. Yeah. See? Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's a there. lot of star power to be like, I'll check this show out. And then the show is just actual fucking garbage. Actual garbage. <laughs> the, cra- the crazy thing is that that's probably how a lot of Japanese people think anyway. So it's probably a big hit in Japan. I think that, like most people in most countries, no one really gives too much of a shit. If you come that's to our true. country, respect our true. customs and our traditions, and we'll we'll be true. fine. Like, that's literally the bare minimum, bro. Like, you go to Japan, don't be a fucking obnoxious asshole fucking live streaming and being a fucking dickhead to everyone around there, like wearing a stupid uh, Toy Story hat and filming dead bodies in the forest. 
Like, don't do that shit. Don't, don't, don't. Throwing Pokemon balls at cars. <laughs> don't be the stereotype. Uh, but yeah, like it's to me that's what it is. Like I remember, um, were they hosting the World Cup in like one of the um mainly Islamic countries or something? Uh, Qatar. Qatar, Qatar. Yeah. And a lot of people in Qatar are like, look, we don't like allow, we don't like people who have uh, tattoos and stuff and all this other crap, right? And drinking alcohol. Uh, but here are here are certain rules that you should follow: no alcohol, right? And mm. like, none of you just follow these basic set of rules to respect our customs, like the no alcohol thing. Um, they didn't mind if you were gay, but just don't be gay out in public, because you know, very homophobic um, religion. Like most hardcore religion, uh, it's very homophobic. But it was like, they're not going to be stoning you in the middle of the street for having like a pride uh, tattoo on your body. They might ask you to cover it up or something, but again, you got to think about where you're at. In a predominantly yeah. Muslim country, and you got to follow their rules. <laughs> women, like, they were like, we're not going to force women to wear hijabs. We'd prefer it if you did. <laughs> but if you're a tourist coming here, just don't drink and don't do like drugs. That's literally and don't be a woman. <laughs> you well, you can be, be a, woman. a woman. Like they didn't mind that women were walking around. It's like we would prefer if you walked around for your own safety with men being escorted by men, because as is with our customs. But they essentially were just like, just don't do things that are considered super haram. Um, and that's you know, on that that's it. And I'm like that to me that was bare minimum. And to all the people on Twitter who are screaming about this country is so backwards, this and that, I'm like, dude, you went to their country, all right? Like, you want to go yeah. to some place that they tell you you can't do this, and you complain about the fact that you can't do this? Like, fuck off, get out of here. It's not your fucking country. Just like anyway, how when, anime. <laughs> oh my god, this anime. Is a WTF now we're not talking about. All right. Anyway, um, I talked about QA in another world uh, last episode as well. Yeah, and I, I said it was interesting. It had an interesting premise. I still maintain maintained that it had an interesting premise. Mm -hmm. So, um, it it's about a guy who gets uh, he's not isekai, but he's like he's stuck in he's a QA for this VR he's game. He's SAO'd. Yeah, they're SAO'd. I hate that we can use that as a verb now. Uh, they they <laughs> they played the full dive VR and they were supposed to be QA testing for a game. Then they get trapped in it. And I was like, okay, pretty interesting premise, like trapped in the game. I'm, I don't mind that premise too much. But this guy is trying to figure out, like, what are the rules? How do I get out of here? And he still takes his debugging job seriously because there are things that could go wrong. And in the next few episodes, we actually see, like, his old party members start using the debug menu, the thing that he doesn't want to use, like the god he, console commands, god god mode and stuff yeah. like that. And they specifically and, told them, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, because they could lead to unseen bugs. And that's what happened to a lot of people. Like his party and stuff gets wiped out or his uh, QA company, his QA team gets wiped out because they fall prey to bugs because now they can't die and respawn. They're just infinitely stuck forever. So it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so I'm like, interesting premise i like all of this you know i'm just like it's pretty interesting and then i got to one of the latest episodes where the entire joke was that ha ha look at this 12 year old holding vibrators uh full-on yeah. vibrators yeah just like it's censored and stuff that's, and it's like that's a little oh, this this dungeon is not they i guess the devs played a nasty trick and just put fucking dildos everywhere and the uh, guy, the boss is speaking only in English and just basically saying every, saying fuck, shit, motherfucker, and all this stuff. And it's like, oh, this, write this down. This needs to be fixed in the QA update. And I'm like, okay. Was this written by a VisiPop? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Don't hate on VisiPop too much. Vivian, Vivian did no wrong, kind of. But at, at this point, I'm just like, I, I kind of want to drop the show because I'm like, look. The premise is interesting, but these are some lame fucking jokes, bro, about like like what what is funny about looking at this twelve year old girl waving around dildos? Is that comedy? Like is that is that hilarious to you? I don't get it. What's supposed to be funny about it? I think that it's funny in the context of like, let's say I had a four year old kid and they accidentally found our sex toys, like me and my wife's sex toys. That that is funny in the context of like to like, oh my god, I'm so embarrassed my kid found my sex toy. Or like when your dog finds your sex toy, like that is funny in that type of context, right? This is a completely strange. She's an NPC, sure. She's not a 
real person. She's a 12 year old computer program. So the it's like, oh, the essence of the joke is still the same. Someone who's innocent, who doesn't know what this is, is picking it up and playing around with it. Because she, she's like 12 and she picks it up and she's like waving around. It's like, is this a magic wand? Wacha, wacha. And it's like, <laughs> it's a magic wand. <laughs> <laughs> Not that kind of magic wand. It can, it can make you speak in tongues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I, I get the appeal of the joke in that context, but they just kept running with it. They just kept doing it, the joke, for like a couple minutes. And I'm like, if this was a sight gag that happened for like 10 seconds, I wouldn't have seen – I wouldn't have been too harsh on it. But it, it goes on for like a full-on minute or two, bro. And I'm just It like, does, why? actually, yeah. Like, why? Like, after she discovers the sex toys in this torture dungeon – she opens a chest and they find more and then she picks it up and it's like choo 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 and I'm like this isn't this went from kind of funny to like this is not funny anymore the the joke is played out bro like move on go back to the actual cool stuff about this story which is there's some pretty messed up people like it, it would happen you know human people get trapped in the game and they get they're given console commands obviously everyone's going to eventually turn to the evil playthrough right like no one yeah. everyone's first going to try to play the um the paladin playthrough and then everyone's going to go renegade later right <laughs> that's that's how it all goes in rpgs it especially if you're like given that. especially if you're given console commands so that to me that's why i thought it was interesting because i'm like yeah if i was stuck in skyrim and i had access to console commands I'd play the game like normal for a while, but then eventually I'd probably just start using console commands to do whatever. And then just try to be like, can I collect all the cheese in Skyrim and put it in my house? Cheese! <laughs> There's a guy who did that. It's a meme. He collected all the uh, wheels of cheese in Skyrim to put in his house. <laughs> I'm assuming he hard crashed the game every time he loaded it. Uh, eventually, after like 30 something thousand wheels of cheese, yeah. <laughs> cheese. Ah, so we know the limit. So we have an upper limit. They and yeah. they and in one of the episodes they actually talked about that where it's like, oh, if we spawn enough of these enemies, it's gonna lag out the frame rate so we can escape. And I'm like, that's cool. I like that. I like video game stuff, you know? It's these cool moments where that makes me I I want to like QA in another world for that. But then just like there's also these super lame moments, like it's specifically just this joke so far. So it's not too egregious, so I, I might not drop it, but at the same time, it's like you guys got to focus. This show needs to focus more on the actual interesting aspects of it. Like, so I am actually gonna agree with John on this. Um, not on the dildo joke. I don't really give a shit about that. I thought it was kind of funny, but like went too long, but kind of funny still. My problem with this show is the fact that the characters spark no joy in me. I don't yeah, feel a connection. Don't. I don't find them interesting. I'm just like they are whatever. They they are not interesting. They're not yeah, cool. Right? They, there is nothing that I can connect to about them. Like I'm just, for me when I'm watching this, I feel like I'm just sitting on the couch watching the show and I'm not engaged. Right. And yeah. that's not a good thing. That is absolutely not a good thing. Like I'm thinking about dropping this show. That's so far. I watch literal trash. <laughs> and I will finish it. For me to actually want to drop something is not a good sign. Yeah. Uh, I feel like with... But... Sorry, John. Just let me get, finish this quickly. But as John said, the concept is actually interesting. It's yeah, cool. it has and when they do, moments. Yeah. And when they do cool video game stuff, I'm like, yo, that's fucking dope. I love that shit. So are we saying it's a good idea executed badly? Yes. Like, they just, it just won't focus on the really interesting things. Like, in the la latest episodes, it started focusing on the the better story, parts of the story. Like, they meet another QA guy who also um, falls in love with an NPC. And then something happens to the NPC. And as it turns out, NPCs can't be revived. Yet, I don't understand what they meant by that. Because in the very first episode, the QA tester guy is like, he talks about how he's tried to save this village a, a thousand times or whatever to prevent them from dying but it's a scripted event so they always have to die so even if he destroys the big bad they still all die as if mm -hmm. the big bad killed them because it's scripted and it's like every NPC is unique canon event. yeah so it's just like well every NPC is unique and um, they can't be revived and I'm like okay but 
if they were destroyed in a canon event, they can't they they can still come back, like the quest resets or something. So I'm like, so I don't understand how this other NPC couldn't be brought back because this other NPC was killed by not a canon event. But she is a quest giver, so like, why would okay, you kill off a quest giver? That's true. Um, I mean, it's I guess it's not like Skyrim where the only people you can't kill are the people who are important to the actual story. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Todd. <laughs> and I understand that this this is a buggy village that didn't have full impl- implementation, so I I can logic my way around it. But it's just like, I don't know, man. Just like be consistent with your your rules. Um, focus more on like the NPC side story stuff, not the stupid jokes. Mm. Like it, it needs to be more focused, I guess, is what I'm saying. If it was more focused on the actual story at hand instead of like, here's a little bit of the story, but also here's a funny, haha, irreverent moment. Like when they're leaving with the new QA guy, they're like, all right, let's go. And they hide in their bush because like, haha, remember they this guy is so overly cautious. So he's going to be hiding in the bush, crawling on the ground. And they're like, it's going to take us days to get there if we do it like that. And it's like, that wasn't a very funny joke. Um I would have preferred if you just didn't do the joke at all <laughs> and focus more on like better execution of your story. <laughs> yeah, it's it's very middling so far. Um I'm I don't know if I'm going to drop it or not. I guess it's going to depend on the next episode. If it is if it's even more lackluster the next episode, I probably will drop it just cuz like what's the point in watching it? I've seen enough to be like it's not that great. Hmm. But yeah, thus far there's nothing really redeeming about QA in another world. So I guess those people who voted it down to 4.3 stars on Crunchyroll were right. It's not that good. <laughs> Honestly, it should go lower. <laughs> oh, damn. All right, bro. Damn. This is coming from the guy who watches literal dog shit. <laughs> Look, I'll still rate the dog shit as dog shit, but like... No, no. I need you to explain yourself here. I okay. need you to explain yourself about Tower of God, because yeah. the only thing I've heard about Tower of God season two is that it's actual dog water funny thing is i'm actually kind of enjoying it i'm enjoying the characters i think it looks much cleaner now compared to season one i think it sounds better as well um i'm enjoying the ost straight up i I will say um isn't, yeah, I just think I just think it's done better. I'm enjoying the characters doing more. Doing the OST for Tower of God. It's not Kevin, is it? I don't remember. Don't ask me. That's a good question. Um, uh, but yeah, no. So everything about it production-wise is better. Uh, the story I'm kind of enjoying more, just maybe because the old characters aren't there, and it's uh, like basically it a new was cast. done by Kevin Pank, and I was right. Oh shit! Well, I guess that's why I'm enjoying it so much. God uh, that bless was Kevin. season one. That was season one. I don't know oh. who's doing season two. Well, look that up real quick. Uh, uh, I think John's doing it. Oh, um, uh, yeah, I'm looking it up. But yeah, no. So Kevin Pinkin. Yep. Okay, yep. cool. But yeah, no. So I'm just generally enjoying it so much more. I thought you know I'd give it a couple episodes since I finished season one. Try season two, see if I even like it. And it caught me. I'm just like, yo, it's kind of banger now. I like the main character a lot more now. He's kind of a hottie now. I'm just like... Oh, yeah. Because this is after the time skip, right? Yeah, after the time skip. So he has nice long hair. He kind of looks like a twink. I will say, what section this covers for Tower of God is a lot more interesting than season one. I will say that. I know that for a fact. Well, it might be that then. Well, because like... Like in most traditional manhwa fashion, right? Season one essentially is the prologue. Yeah. <laughs> the first hundred chapters, season one is the prologue. Now we're getting to the actual story. Uh, it's unfortunate Crazy. that I, I'm I'm a lot further in Tower of God for the manhwa um, or webtoon. I guess it is. It's a webtoon. I'm not sure it's a manhwa. I think it's a webtoon. But actually, I don't know if there's a difference between manhwa and webtoon. Point is, um, I'm pretty far along like i'd probably be around like what would be considered season four or five Sheesh. of the yeah I'm, I'm deep into tower of god and that's where i dropped it because i'm like all right i'm just tired of it because it's another <laughs> it's an annoying thing with manhwa slash like, the webtoons whatever that 
these stories run on for a long time, bro. Like, don't get me wrong. There's a couple that I quite enjoy. Like, Overgeared, for example. I read up to, like, chapter 1,300 for the novel. And I enjoy it, but after a while, you just get tired of it, bro. Yeah. It's like Law and Order. Just, just end it already. Yeah, like, I feel like there's a limit to how much how many arcs you should put in a story um because it just kind of doesn't it doesn't stay fresh no more um i'm not saying that shows are bad if they are long running uh but i am saying that there are definitely arcs that are a lot weaker than others that definitely don't have to be included in the overall run of a series Uh, i primarily am thinking about like bleach um Naruto, there's a couple arcs that I'm like, yeah, I didn't really, no one really, should, no one should care about that. And then there's also the filler for the anime. Like, it, to me, there's just weak, There's it, it's always like that in a series, right? There's always weak arcs and stuff. And I just feel that it's especially strong inside of Manwa, especially like in Tower of God, where you get to the middle section and it kind of like, it just gets middling. It, it gets boring, monotonous. It kind of loses sight of itself. And it's like it needs to get drawn back, which is why I like a lot more short form. Like we're only four, six, four to six volumes deep, and the story is done. And it's like good, it's a complete story. You know, I don't need you to have forty fucking volumes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Or a hundred, or two hundred, or 300. like I can't imagine writing for forty volumes is fun for anyone, reading or writing. <laughs> yeah. So, those are my thoughts on it. Okay. And... Um, like I said, I, I knew that this part would be better. Uh, and if Kevin's coming back to do the OST, then it's going to be a bang-up job. I just am... I just don't care about Tower of God ever since I dropped it. Because I know exactly where it's going. And it's like... Like uh, you were talking about, Alex, with um, Ian. It's like, because I have future knowledge, I'm like, I'm killing the hype for myself. Because <laughs> <laughs> I have future knowledge. Let me ask this. Does it get pretty obvious as you as it goes on where it's heading? Not so much obvious as it just keeps handing out MacGuffins left and right. And I'm just like, I really don't care about that at it at this point. Like, who Bomb is and, like, the, where the story is going to go. Like, after the whole reveal about who Bomb is and, like why he's be, being able to basically MacGuffin his way through a lot of this bullshit and it's just like oh so I All just right didn't then. care it's a no. it's a it's a it wants to be a shonen but it doesn't have any of the hallmarks of a shonen you know which is good character building <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I don't mind if in a shonen someone's OP because they ate some dude's nasty ass pube hair and all of a sudden had all of their powers all right but um <laughs> is that they not what he does i, I yeah <laughs> i mean uh, you're not you're, you're pretty much all, all there yeah listen apparently it's now popular to hate on my hero academia and i've been hating on it for a listen, long time listen <laughs> after the og after, hater a, a, after that ending we're changing the name of his power to all for nothing <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it's it's fine to have OP abilities and stuff like that. But you're supposed to have good characters when you have OP abilities. If you don't have yeah. a good character for like the actual character itself, then what's the point? And yet, I have mean, a strong like, sporting cast. That's the, another thing the, that I believe. The biggest that's a appeal lot of, of Naruto. Have. The biggest appeal of Naruto is the characters, and especially the sporting cast. Yeah. Well, so. I, I mean, again, a hallmark of shonen, it's the power of friendship, right? And that's yeah. entirely what Naruto is all about: the power of, of friendship. Yes, the power of cuckoldry. <laughs> you've been looking at too much of the stuff that um is it classy ulysses been posting all of that yeah. <laughs> yeah. in our discord server yeah yeah you've been watching too much of that anyway tell anyway. me about uh the new season of monogatari because oh, all i know yes. all, i know that yosobi does the opening and no, it's amazing ending. ed the ending ending they they do uh they yosobi does a song and i like the song that's all i know yes uh, the song is the called Undead. Like it's it's very good. Uh, Yosobi just just doesn't miss these days, I guess. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, the the new season of Monogatari is out. Um, we're six six episodes in. Yeah, six episodes in. Um, we've got two arcs that have been adapted, um, both from off season. Um, the first one is Sukihi Undo, and the second one, which just ended, is Nautico Draw. Um, Nautico 
Bro, draw that's such a, a spoiler. That's such a spoiler. Just the okay. arc name itself is a huge spoiler. Listen, I don't know what to tell you at this point. Um, but I anyway. guess it wouldn't be a spoiler unless you knew the bare minimum amount of information that I do. <laughs> yeah. About Nautico. <laughs> um, that, so Nautico Draw, this is such a good conclusion to her story arc. It, it's, oh God, it's so good. Um, and it's it's great to finally see it animated. Um, Shaft has not lost, I, I was afraid because it's been a number of years now since Shaft worked on um, Monogatari and it's honestly been several years since Shaft worked on anything that was substantial or super popular. Um, so, and I know that a few people have left Shaft since the, since Zoku War and Monogatari came out. Um, so I was, I was concerned. I was concerned that it wasn't going to be like up to standard that I was expecting with Monogatari. Okay. Uh, in these six episodes so far, those fears have been completely allayed. It's like they never stopped working on this show. Um, Aki Kishimbo <laughs> is still 100% on his game. That's good. Yeah. Um, it's still as weird as ever. Um, the, the, oh, the new OP with, um, Nautico is really good too. You'll like it, John. If you liked, um, Renai Circulation and, uh, what was the other one? Muso Express? Muso Express, yeah. Yeah. Um, you'll love this one too. <laughs> I mean, I just love Nautico's voice actress a lot. Um, oh, Kanahana's hours is top, top just tier. Top tier. Even with all the NFT stuff, I still like her music. <laughs> yeah, I, I, unfortunate about the NFTs, but uh, <laughs> listen, we can't all be winners. I just, uh, I, I, I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't want to talk too much about this. I'm just so happy that it's it's number one that it's back and number two we're finally getting a complete adaptation of monogatari at shaft is keeping its word it said back in 2010 that it intended to adapt the entire monogatari series of light novels and they are keeping their word i mean i'm glad you and the other 10 people who actually like monogatari and are keeping wow up fuck, you. All of it. fuck you fuck <laughs> you <laughs> listen, listen there there are there are lots of uh shall we say Interesting people in prison who love Monogatari. <laughs> oh. All I know is um, Monogatari is one of those shows that the people who love it absolutely love it. And there are a lot of people who know of it but don't actually watch it. Um, I I still haven't watched any of uh, Zoku, so I, I can't. Like, I can't watch the last season. And I just don't plan to <laughs> at this point I, in time. It's all on Crunchyroll. Now, I will say... For whatever reason, Crunchyroll still to this day has fucked up Bakemonogatari. Like, the only way to watch the last three episodes of that season is... Yo-ho! Isn't that because it releases an OVA? Yeah, the last three episodes were released as OVAs, and for whatever reason, Crunchyroll is allergic to bringing them to the platform. Well, I know that there's a different... Because OVAs and stuff have different licensing things. Uh, they're allowed yeah. more freedom when making an OVA than they are like an aired <laughs> show, a TV show, for a TV show. Yeah. yeah. Like, I believe OVAs were like the first interpretation of, of hentai. Originally started maybe, as OVAs. Maybe. I don't know. I, I never really looked into the history of OVAs. Yeah. I know back in the day, the a lot of them were like special... Um, like promotions were the ways you got them. So like the um, the original Legend of the Galactic Heroes was released entirely as OVA series as an as an uh, entirely as an OVA series on VHS. And the only way you could actually get these OVAs was to be subscribed to a specific magazine, and you had to send in like a thing at the um, back of the magazine to get the VHS tape. That'd be a really interesting episode to do. Do a lot of research like, on like the, the history the of OVAs. The, no, the history of hentai. <laughs> oh, I mean, <laughs> hey, I, I'm all for doing that kind of research. Listen, I got to go to the I, store first. But. <laughs> and, uh, I've got yes. plenty of research I can go through. Oh I mean, uh, I'll need a couple more rolls. I'm just saying. <laughs> Says the biggest degenerate here. Like, get yeah, out of here. Yeah, I know. This dude This dude is just sighing like this is some kind of, like, imposition. It's like, dude, you want to fuck Vaporeon. I mean, it, he's... I guess are stuck on, like, one thing. God, get new jokes. Well, the problem Listen. is that one thing proved that you were a massive degenerate. Speaking of people being degenerates, um... And also, Yo Asobi, uh, are you done talking about, um... 
Money yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I'm done. I mean, I just, I'm just so happy that it's number one back and number two. Shaft is Shaft, man. I mean, I feel like the only people I've heard talk about the Monogatari series in the anime community is you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm, certainly the most, thought... I'm certainly the most vocal fan of it in our server. Well, I just meant like in general, like through the any any tuber community of like youtube comments that i peruse i mean really back in the day on the podcast Riker was into it a lot too i know but like you know how there are certain shows and stuff that would just like be talked about everywhere in the comments of like videos yeah. over here and there yeah i haven't heard much like it's, it's tis but a drop in the last Actually, tis but yeah. a drop I agree. It's it's really weird. I thought it'd be a lot more popular. So I'm, I'm kind of weirded out by that. I, I mean, the people the, might have the just people like that are into out. it are really into it, like John said. Yeah, well, the yeah, but you guys have Stockholm out. syndrome. <laughs> yeah. Stockholm syndrome. Yeah, you're actually being held at gunpoint by Nicio Eason at this moment. I, I will. I words. will say I, again. I take this with a grain of salt, uh, but I will say on Mal at least. Um, it's currently sitting the the new season is currently sitting at an eight point nine seven, but out of how many votes? Uh, eight thousand one hundred and sixty five. All right, now look at um, Oshinoko season two. See how many votes that has. How many people oh are watching? My that? God, I gotta scroll the way up for that. Uh, Oshinoko has 32,981 users that have scored it so far, 8.48. Yeah, just like the difference in the amount of traffic one show is getting compared to the other. Yeah. I mean, that's and just how it is, though. And apparently over a quarter of a million users on Mal have it on their list. Wow, that's Somewhere. quite a lot. Um, yeah, it, Everyone got fucked up by the first episode of Oshinoko Season 1, but uh, Oshinoko Season 2 is fucking amazing. <laughs> I, the crazy thing is, before this season started, you were like, oh, this is not going to be the best arc. People are going to hate it. I think this arc is super boring. Um, but has the anime uh, made it interesting? They the upped the production on it so much that they made it interesting. So, I, I'm i up to date with Oshinoko. I like reading the manga. Um, I went to go read it because of the freaking listening to Yosobi Idol. Just because of the OP literally went to go and like this is such a good op i'll go read the manga <laughs> uh this new op is pretty good i like it it's not yoasobi so i'm a little disappointed you know but the it's it's all right i will say this part of the manga to me was very boring because it d deals with a lot of character drama and i'm like the interesting thing about oshinoko was season one episode one the murder mystery stuff, right? I feel like that was the biggest draw of why everyone went, yo, what the heck? Whoa! And then, like, we just never focus on that ever again. Until you get to, the, like, the ending. And I I personally think season three of Oshinoko would be more hyped than season two because it's it, it goes back to the main story of, like, who killed their mom? Uh, but... I am really surprised at the effects of season two. Like, it's the stage play arc. And like I said, it's more character drama. It's a lot more boring, in my opinion. And it's kind of like the predecessor before it kicks off of, like, we're heading towards the final story. So okay. to me, it's kind of like the build up to the climax. So it's like, it's not that good compared to the climax, which is, you know, like, oh my God, here's the plateau. It's up here. Uh, but I am, like, I, I, didn't watch Oshinoko season two starting off the season. Like I waited until there was like four episodes out, I think, before I started watching it because I was so like, "Oh, that's right." Good. Well, not not to see that, but just because I was like, I watched the first episode when it came out because we were we were in LA at the time, Alex, and I was yeah. like, "Oh my god, Oshinoko season two. and I watched the first episode, and then like I got ten minutes in, I'm like, "Yeah, I don't want to watch this," so I stopped, <laughs> and then I completely forgot about it for a whole month. Then I went back to watch it, and I was like, "That oh, was also right. the time I blew your mind because you didn't realize there was an anime adaptation of the Elusive Samurai out." I need to catch up on that. I'm only on episode four, or I'm only on <laughs> like three. you're talking about. Hey, you should really read this manga, Elusive Samurai. I think you would like it, Alex. It's like, oh, the anime that just started too. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I started watching Oshinoko season two, and I am I'm blown away by it. 
uh the they really upped the production value and they have changed quite a lot from how the manga presents the information to how the anime presents information for example, in the latest episode of Oshinoko, uh, I think it was the latest episode, they actually, they sit, in the first episode, they show you where they sit in the back of the audience and you're watching an actual stage play, a 2.5D stage play, which seems weird. In the latest episode, or the, la the last episode I watched, they do that for the first, like, 10 minutes of the episode, oh. where it's just the stage play of it happening. We're just watching it in the background, like we're at the back of the uh, the uh, like we're in the audience, yeah, yeah, like we're in the audience watching it. And it's just the stage play. And I'm like, yo, what the fuck? It's <laughs> like, so cool that they cool. did that though. And then when they zoom in on the characters and of the characters doing the stage play, dude, the fucking budget on this shit. They're doing flips and shit. This shit's getting animated hella well. I'm like, yo. <laughs> like the way that they're presenting this it's not like this, it's not presented like that in the manga at all they don't do this any of these action scenes at all right they just do panel of this guy talking panel of him inner monologue panel of him talking again panel of inner monologue again that's kind of just how the manga does this part they completely so, were like no nah, fuck it we're, we're gonna turn it into the stage play and you're gonna watch it motherfucker and i was like how you do adaptation well bro it's yeah. so good oh my god and that this is like this blew me out of the water i did not expect them to go this hard because th to me i couldn't think about how they could make this part more interesting because i was like the content itself is novel it is interesting like i do like the world building the character building and stuff like that the character development the drama all these... and yeah i do like that but overall it's pretty boring in the grand scheme of who killed i that's that's all i'm saying Especially since once they kick off into the next area and they're like, oh, we're going to discover who it is and all this other shit, it's, it goes, it goes. You're like, got to keep, got to keep clicking, got to keep clicking, got to yeah. keep reading. All right. Give me that content. Yeah. It's, but I, I, I'm, I love it. <laughs> like, I, I honestly am uh, shocked to say the least, if you couldn't tell. Cause I, I really, I, this is again. I was killing the hype for myself because because I didn't think this arc was that good in the manga, but I completely forgot that sometimes anime studios can do an adaptation and improve the source material. It you just got one of those my jabated reversed. You got reverse jabated. He jabated himself. Well, because as the Sara source material to me the source material is peak right like how do you improve upon peak and uh, it, it can be done and we have seen it it happens times. it's 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 rare it's a rare sighting when it happens but it does happen yeah like bochi the rock's animation was um like the anime for bochi the rock was really done really well because all the love put behind it and yeah. um like especially with all the music and stuff i was like i was blown away i didn't realize yeah how many i didn't realize how many people worked on this like loved this series and this entire idea and it, it definitely shows. Uh, K on is another show that's like yeah. that where the manga is not nearly as good. Um, not nearly as good. Hell, the manga may not as well exist. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think Love Live is the same way. I don't like Love Live, but I do know that for Love Live, the manga is pretty boring compared to the animes. Yeah, I feel like that that probably had nowhere to go but up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, a lot like K on whatever like i idle stuff but uh yeah it's it's hard for me to find a name on both hands like I, I don't think i can find 10 source material that were made better by the anime i don't think i can i'd struggle to find 10 myself I, there's probably at least 10 out there but i'd struggle to find them all there's probably more than 10 but for me at like i'd have to do a lot of research to be like Did, was the source material really better and like oh let's, let's like john and i have this. talked about this on the podcast several times about how like a good manga or any source material adaptation is one in which it the quality is equal to the source material yeah but if it exceeds it it's a phenomenal adaptation absolutely absolutely yeah. and whether you know i understand like the whole chainsaw man thing right like people being upset yeah. that it wasn't adapted one for one it it had all anime these, original scenes in there. There's, yeah, like it, oh, the heresy of it all. And it's like it enhanced the heresy it for me. of showing Aki's daily routine. My God. <laughs> oh my God. It's so dumb. So, so dumb. There's a reason why we call them armchair directors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, there's a reason why we call them basement dwelling fucking Neanderthals. That yeah. <laughs> uh, I just, I wanted to bring up like. <laughs> I know there were a bunch of anti-tubers um, 
content creators that were like, Oshinoko is dead in the water. The hype killed itself the because they on a boat. <laughs> I don't know, bro. Like things come up on my feed on YouTube and I'm just like I watch I watch other anti tubers now. Uh <laughs> as an anti tuber myself, I suppose. I should watch other anti tubers. But anyway, there's a lot of people like making content but like, oh this this series fell off and it's like to me the series never fell off because I read the manga, so it didn't fall off at all. But I could see how for the anime, like Natai, I believe, had the exact same reaction where it's like the first episode's like, whoa, what the heck? But then he gets to the end. He's like, there's like nothing here. Like, it's not as good as I thought it was. Like, what what happened to the story? So I understand that point of view. Like, it does. It kills its own hype because it it shows you the most interesting thing in the first hour long episode. And then you don't even see a squeak of it for the next 12. Not even a crumb. Not even a crumb of the actual interesting story plot. But again, to me, I was like, but I think the characters themselves are good enough. Like, I, I love Kana. I love, <laughs> I love Memcho. Oh, yes, Memcho. Memcho let's go. She's actually the best. Uh, and then like all the VAs for like Aqua and Ruby are really good. And I feel like there's more to it than than just that mainstay thing. I think everything else, the supporting cast and whatnot, and the uh, characters and the subplots between these characters are interesting enough for me to stay invested to there's watch it. To the immense amount of work that makes it interesting yeah so just yeah. like production value skyrocketed and they they just the way that they're directing this and writing it is really good <laughs> this is another anime adaptation where I, I like i genuinely see a lot of love being put into it from the people working on it i fully agree with that i would agree yeah i mean fantastic <laughs> to see i i i can only imagine that like you know watching jojo's with david productions I can only imagine the people who watch or who are adapting the series love the series because of how much effort they've put into it. <laughs> like yeah. it, it, it's they're not very just treating apparent. it like some job. Yeah, like there's there's certain you know like failure frame. It feels like the people working on it are just kind of treating it like a job. Yeah, <laughs> not even a job, <laughs> a paycheck, <laughs> <laughs> a really shitty job. Yeah, but yeah, that's all I got anyway. for uh, Oshinoko. I'll say this. Every day, I, I I hop on high dive. I'm like, is it here yet? <laughs> yeah. Is it here yet? <laughs> Come on, bro. I need, I need that my episode. crack. You know what's terrible? I used to not be like that because I was like, oh yeah, I completely forgot about high dive and Oshinoko because I'm watching like I parry everything and um, dungeon people as well. And I'm like, yeah, I'll go watch those instead. But now that I'm back on Oshinoko and I'm at, I'm caught up. I'm like, I'm not like, is it, is it updated yet? <laughs> what, what is it? Is it is it here yet? <laughs> Even though I know what fucking happens, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I see the literal countdown every day on when the next episode <laughs> comes out, but I'm I still log on. Like, is it there? <laughs> yeah, it's it's great. I think anyone who stopped watching after season one, if they're worried about season two, like watch it. It's way it's it's improved upon the source, bro. Don't like, listen to the naysayers online. <laughs> yeah. Just listen to what I say for recommendations. Yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> listen to us. We are the superior recommendation source. Of course. Clearly. Clearly. Obviously. Clearly. Sound like the physical embodiment of Reddit gold. All right. You know what? I need, to, I need you to tell me about your feelings on My Wife Has No Emotions. I need to know what, is ha what has changed since we've last spoke. Because I believe last time we watched it or we talked about it, it was only one or two episodes, right? It was like two episodes it was yeah, two think, episodes yeah, like two episodes in so now we're at like episode five or six or something it's been a month yeah so my wife has no emotion uh for those who don't know it's about this guy who gets a, a robot maid uh and um he basically falls for her and like asks her hey want to be married and she's like yeah sure and because of how it's animated and all that, it, it doesn't look that great. I was just not feeling it, and I didn't okay. like the MC because I was like, yo, this guy's kind of a loser. Yeah, he's a soy boy beta cuck, yes. Yeah, he's a soy boy beta cuck. I'm just like, I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling this. But I kept on going because I'm just like, all right, well, let's see where where this goes. I'm I'm a endorser of cyber fucking, so like... Let's see how this yeah. goes. <laughs> um, Listen, I think people think it's pretty weird when I say this, but I think that if robots or AR, if any type of like machine became sentient, 
I'd give them rights. Like to me, they're they're just as good. as Oh people. no! I thought you were about to say that's the whole thing about it. sentience. Yeah. Well, I mean that too. The duh. I'm like what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean that fuck Tron three thousand, baby. Like what? God, you just imagine the second your your robot fuckatron just malfunctions, just rips your I'm, cock off. I'm die a happy man, dude. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah, I'm like what are you talking about? <laughs> But anyway, um, um, so this series, it it grew on me because that main character has genuine love, like, and it's not cringe either. Like, he genuinely is in love with his robot wife, and she's technically not supposed to be sentient, but like, it shows like hints here and there that she is all that kind of crap, and I'm just like, and she's very into him, like, she is hardcore into him, even though she can't outwardly display emotion, and I'm just like, yo, okay, this, this kind of, this kind of hitting the Kokoro, like, I'm like, okay, this is kind of cute, I can see where they're going, I can see how they're setting things up, and just, like, they're cute together as a couple, and I'm really into that, like, it's genuine love, and I love that. So that's what's changed for me. The fact that the relationship is genuine. Okay. Um, I feel like my wife has no emotions really plays on the Chobits angle quite a lot. It like does. if you look, if you look at the OP and I'm just like, this, this sounds like Chobits, bro. The, ooh, 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 ooh. And I'm like, Hey, you know what else has an opening that goes, ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. Chobits. <laughs> Chobits. <laughs> Another anime about loving a robot waifu. Um, God, Chobits is so old. Does, do people even know what Chobits is anymore? Not the young ones. But, but yeah, like, no, hearing you say that it's old is like, oh God. Why? Well, the reason I say that is because like I, I like Chobits. I cherish it. You know, I like um, cherish it too. But I realize that Chobits is one of the shows that the youth probably would never like. It's not something that would be passed down a, a, generations from now, like Tokyo Ghoul or Attack on Titan. There's, or, there, or there's a lot of stuff. Either. There's a lot of stuff about it I don't think is aged very well. Right. Oh, absolutely. Especially yeah, its um, art style. Yeah. I feel it plays on a lot of the Chobits angles, and it's the same premise, too. You know, falling in love with a fucking appliance, essentially. But I I have a problem with the anime. I think the anime is not making Mina, the robot wife, cute enough. Now... I say this as a manga reader because in the manga there are certain things that she does that makes her a lot cuter than in the anime is portraying. Like for example whenever she's embarrassed in the manga and she needs to process information she'll squint her eyes and look up like this. Like, like it's like oh she's processing this cute thing that's happening and it's like she does that. It's like a little, little um quirk of hers that she'll do to like signify like she's processing they've exchanged this for just having her do the little uh data things going across her eyes because she's communicating with someone else like the other minas to like process stuff and i feel like that's a bad change i don't know why just the gesture alone was like cute enough for me yeah that sounds so much more emotive and uh, yeah that sounds so, so much more entertaining wow why would they get rid of that i don't know I, I honestly don't know. And it's like, it, I get it. It's anime. You want to make use of animation. But I feel like the expressive acting of her own was something that el helped lend credence to like, oh, maybe she is sentient. Maybe she's more like a human than we think. Um, So that's like one, one of my issues with it. I still think Mina is super cute. Like the way that she cares for Takumi. Takuma? Takuma? Takuma. 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 The way that she cares for Takuma. Hilarious. Uh, like, in the latest episode where it's like, oh, my wife is gone for two weeks. Bust out the unhealthy chips. Give me that top ramen and let me drink all the beer. And I'm like, hell yeah, brother. I get you. My wife's away. I can finally eat coconut. I can finally eat shellfish. I can eat spicy food. Bro, I just eat straight up Thai food all day. <laughs> like, whoo, I can finally eat it. I don't have to worry is, about her dying. <laughs> is Lacey just giving you the side eye from the bed? <laughs> 
no, she's laughing because she knows. I tell her she she sees we we have a, a DoorDash app and I she has my login, so she sees when I order and she knows whenever she leaves, I order all the food that she hates eating, so I can have it. <laughs> Instant junk food days. <laughs> so it's just it hits me like right in my heart. Like I I, I loved it so much, and then and then when he gets caught, he's like. <laughs> He makes that Shrek face that I make when I get caught doing something I'm not supposed to be doing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a it's a pretty decent adaptation thus far. Like the main story is still the same, and I I feel the same kind of emotion from it. But I just feel like they're not m- making it live up to its maximum potential of why I like the manga so much. That's all. Um, maybe that'll change because they've now finally introduced Mamoru. And I'm like, God, Mamoru is also super cute, bro. I love oh my Mamoru. God. Yeah, so, like, <laughs> light, uh, light spoilers. He's in the OP. Uh, they get a robot son, and it's so cute. It's so cute. I want yeah. one. That's another one that um, I, another part of the manga that I really loved was when they introduced Mamoru. Because I'm like, it just, it, it was like, it increased the cuteness factor of this manga by, like, fivefold. <laughs> It's like they're not just a couple anymore. They have, they have, they have a, a offspring. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's great. They're not just married. They have a kid. I did say oh that. Oh my god. The, um I want to see the, uh his sister's reaction to the fact that they have a kid. <laughs> oh, that'd be hilarious. Uh I did mention it in the preview, season preview that they eventually get a kid. So I did oh, like yeah. boil it back then, but I was like it's not a big deal. It's not it's like literally it's not like what idea. because I think the surprise of how they get a kid is the funniest way. <laughs> like, you know what's funny about this is you talk about this. It's an episode of Star Trek: The Next Generation. Oh where, my god, Star Trek! Where, again. where where Data, who's an android, like builds his own child. And when he, like, introduces this to all the other crew members, they freak the fuck out. (laughs) (laughs) Why? I can't go into that without spoiling the episode, so. um, All right. Well. It just reminded me of that. You tell me that this robot has a kid. Uh, All right. Whose turn is it? Is it mine? Yes. Yes. Waiting for you to talk about Slime Season 3. Oh, God. Or um, near. I'd actually rather hear you talk about near. I, I am actually very. I'd rather talk me. about slime tensei because it's very disappointing. <laughs> oh, near is disappointing. No, 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 what? no. Near is is great. No, oh, slime okay. tensei has been disappointing. What? I'm kinda I've been like, enjoying it. What? All right. So listen here. Listen. They tell you why you're wrong, and you should feel fucking terrible about yourself, and go sit in the corner. Um, <laughs> sure. the first like ten episodes of this season. We're literally just meeting after meeting after meeting. Yeah, so you told me. Yeah. Um, I haven't watched the third season at all because, again, I read the web novel. I finished it. I don't care. I know what happens yeah. at the end. And if you could pick up on context clues about why I don't care and I don't want to watch it, should tell you about how I feel about the show in general <laughs> at this point in time. Yeah, like, don't get me wrong, I don't think the show is, like, massively, like, deep or, like, something that everyone should watch. I like the first two seasons a lot because I thought it was just really fun, um, goofy action stuff. I'm like, okay, I'm here for it. You got this overpowered character, he gets into these goofy, like, weird shenanigans. It's cool, you know? I mean, yeah, there's lots of deus ex machina stuff, but it's like, eh, turn your brain off, it's fine, it's fine. You're just having fun. This season has been the opposite of fun. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I will say this: after the meetings arc, it, it gets it gets better. It gets so much better. Now and I, the I new OP and ED, the, the new OP and EDs are great. So the anime is based on the light novel. So I know that there's original, like there's actual original content inside of the light novels that weren't present in the web novels. Yeah. So I am missing out on a bunch of like side story stuff. But okay. I I don't know. I feel like once the third season ends, like I I know what happens in the what would be covered in the fourth season, and I r- would rather much watch the fourth season than the third season. I I don't blame honest. you. I mean, yeah, it, it's finally getting to a point where like stuff's happening. Like all the stuff they've been talking about is finally fucking happening. It's taken ten plus episodes to get there. Um, 
but like just there was a better way they could have gone about this there had to have been okay i just I, I refuse to believe that the best way to go forward with this was to have like 10 plus episodes of everyone in meeting rooms. It Listen, wasn't I, 10 plus episodes. Just no, but it felt out. it felt longer than that. I have like a whole backlog of shows that I need to watch the seasons, the next seasons of like Konosuba, Classroom of the Elite, um, Misfitted Demon Academy, so, such and such, so and so. I have a lot of shows I need to continue to watch yeah. on top of like the shows I'm already watching, but I've I've been just like busy. I will say what is coming up seems like it's going to be entertaining. If that's any consolation. I've been reading the manga. It definitely is. I uh, know what's okay, immediately well, coming up. I, I can only good. hope because like if I, if I had to rate this season so far based on what I've seen, cause I gave the first two seasons, like I think eight and like, I think I gave them both eights, eight out of tens. Um, if I had to rate this based on what I've seen so far, it's like a six. Yeah. It's I feel a like fair it's a, criticism. Yeah. Yeah. Have we been doing a uh, slime tensei spoiler cast at all? We've we done have, for right? the first two seasons. Yeah, we have. Okay. Then I guess I should probably watch the third season so we can do it. <laughs> oh God. I guess so. <laughs> I'll do it for content. I won't do it to entertain I mean, myself, but I'll do it for content. <laughs> I mean, it's going to be a quick spoiler cast because, like, at least the first six episodes are really easy to breeze through. It's fine. We can talk about, uh, we can talk about Slime Tensei season three in fifteen minutes. It's fine. We'll release yeah. a fifteen-minute episode. A fifteen-minute sure spoiler that. cast. It's fine. It's fine. There we go. Hey, John, tell me about Brain Rot. Oh, my <laughs> God, bro, I love I, it. My dear friend Nokotan is such a weird anime because i joked about it being like the anime that will save uh wit studio this season because uh isekai suicide squad is going to be garbage and as it and it has come true nokotan has far outclassed isekai suicide squad purely because of memes mind you purely because of yeah. memes and i am watching my dear friend nokotan right and i i don't think it's that funny like it's it's not as funny to me as something like Lucky Star or Nietzsche Joe is, or oh, yeah. Daily Lives of High School Boys or Cromartie High, like the classics. Buddy, right? buddy, buddy, those are, those are like up here. You, yeah, like well, Deer but, is like over here. It's like chill out. <laughs> you don't need to hit it I that don't, hard. Because to me, either there's really funny, good comedy anime, and then they're all other. Than, if they're not really good, they're trash. But that's why yeah. I was bringing this up because. My dear no my dear friend Nokotan is not trash, but it's also like not up here in the upper echelons. Like it's very middling for me so far. Like it's got some funny moments. It's got moments. Um That's the best way to describe it. It's got moments. It's it's literal brain rot, and I feel like it, I'm it's losing, Subway Surfers the anime. I'm losing brain cells when I fucking watch this show, bro. Let me let me ask you guys I, this. Who's your favorite character in it? Obviously, it's freaking Noko. Like, what kind of question is that? Yeah. She's hilarious. She's a fucking deer. She stores bananas in her horns. <laughs> she goes and visits the other deer at the zoo. So that way she can steal freaking deer crackers from people. <laughs> it's hilarious. I'm I love sorry, her. I, I love um, Yoshida, son. <laughs> He's such a cool guy. <laughs> Stupid deers. <laughs> the actual um, deer. <laughs> I... I really liked the joke that they did where they did the cover of Near Near My God to Thee, the Titanic violin song when yes. the Titanic was singing. They do it but with like the Shika noise. I I, Shika. I was like when I heard that, I was like, Is that is that Titanic? There's no <laughs> way they're doing Titanic, right? And I'm just like, dude, that's so that's such a hard cut. Like who would know that? I don't think kids know what Titanic they probably know what Titanic was the event but probably they've never seen the movie with um katie winslet is that kate winslet kate winslet and uh leo leonardo dicaprio yeah baby leo baby leo when, when he was still young enough to date himself <laughs> <laughs> uh Listen, good old pedo my DiCaprio. mom loved leonardo dicaprio she so loved Titanic mine so much we went to watch that freaking movie in theaters, mind you, back in the 90s. Oh, wow. Three? No, five times. Five That's times. That's a long-ass <laughs> movie to go to the theater three or five times. No, it was five times. Three times was for Pearl Harbor. She really loved Pearl oh. Harbor, too. 
and it was kind of like dude movies back in the day were wild people would watch movies more than once <laughs> and thanks to the streaming do you know, services do you know we why watch it once it's and... because it's because now it, it within three weeks of them being in the theaters they're on streaming you had to wait a fucking year for it to be on vhs back yeah then. so then you'd have to watch it again if you wanted to see it again <laughs> yeah if unless you wanted to wait a year for the vhs to come out yeah, but like when they did that uh, near my god to the bit, I just died. I was like, "This is too good, dude!" <laughs> like, what the heck? But I was disappointed because they did that one joke in like episode two or three. I think it was episode two, mm. and then they don't do anything nearly as funny as that to me since. Like, there's certain funny parts, like I said, when Nokotan does the whole like when um who who's the main character girl? I don't even know the main character girl's name. The Yankee. Class oh. president. Oh, uh, who cares? Who cares? Oh, right. Class name. president. Um, she like when she's stalking uh, the deer girl Nokotan and to like figure out like where does this deer even live, and it's just like she pulls out like the banana and then she is like oh she lives at the zoo. It's like no she doesn't live at the zoo. She's she's here to just <laughs> steal deer crackers. Hilarious. Koshitan? Um, yeah, it is Koshi, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, so like that was funny to me, but Koshi, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't nearly as funny as the the Titanic thing, and it just feels like the the really funny bits are few and far in between for me, and the rest are kind of just like middling jokes. Hmm. Yeah, it's brain rot. Like you wrote here, it's like it's just brain rot. I'm it's a ship host. enjoying it. <laughs> I'm yeah. I I don't hate it. Um, I don't know. I don't hate it either, but I'm far from saying it's fantastic. Yeah, and that's kind of the weird thing because I've I, I've never seen a comedy anime where either again, like I said, either I hate it or I love it. And this one is like I don't hate it, but I don't absolutely love it. I like it. It's kind of. I mean, I you know? I, I feel like it's just going to be a seasonal comedy thing. It's not going to be something we ever talk about once it's finished. I maybe I don't know. Uh, there's apparently there's apparently... still more episodes to go, so we'll see. Oh yeah, I know there's more episodes to go, but I I just got a feeling that this is not going to happen. Apparently, have people on power. Twitter are arguing about whether or not Nokotan is trans. Oh what? my god! What? Yeah, there's there's online Twitter dis. <laughs> there's always okay, okay, online okay. Twitter discourse. Twitter. No, no, no <laughs> you just you had to say that word, Twitter, that and it yeah. immediately invalidated it. <laughs> Bro, she a deer. Yeah, and she has horns, but. Does don't have horns. Only bucks it's, do. It's a meme show. Jesus fuck. That's what I said. I was like, dude, it's not that deep. It's literally because it's more identifiable for her to be a deer girl if she had antlers. Yeah. They even made fun of it in the literal first episode. I mean, Whatever. hell, yeah. Watame is a goddamn sheep and she has, she has horns. horns. Yeah. But female sheep don't have horns. I think and I will say... My favorite part of Nokotan so far, though, is when we get to the ending and we see the different deer zoos that they have in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> to me, that's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I love the ED. That's, that, that is a unique thing about this anime, the, the ED sequence there. I like that. It's a live action ED uh, that, that just shows off. All no, it's literally never... just their B-roll for them doing research on deer. Actually, yeah. yeah, you're right. It is their B-roll. It is literally <laughs> their research. It shows them making deer uh, deer crackers, and it shows the deer parks. And I'm like, this is just their research. They were like, fuck it. We ran out of budget for anything else, guys. We're focusing it all on East Guy Suicide Squad because Warner Bros. Not Warner Bros. Um, yeah, it's it's Warner Bros. Bros. No, it is Warner Bros. It is, it is Warner, Warner Bros. Brothers yeah. that owns DC. DC. Yeah, because Warner Bros. told us to, so we're going to have to just cut cut the ED. They're like, wait, we can just show off our B-roll that we took for research to make Everyone, give, give me your cell phone. <laughs> yeah, I swear that's what it was. It wasn't planned at all. I can see I wouldn't, through it. I wouldn't put it past him. But yeah, it is super cute, though, seeing all the little deer. It's like, oh, look at them doing a little wrestling match over there. A little, some deer. All right. Uh, All right. Speaking Last one. Of, speaking of cute stuff, um, pseudo harem is my weekly diabetes. I oh my god, it's so cute. So um, when I first saw the title, I was like, okay, another harem. I'm like, I'm kind of past them, but like, let's see what the hell this is about. This is not normal harem. Um. Yeah, it tells it's you in the title, bro. Can you read? It's a pseudo-harem. Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Let me finish. 
Fuck you. Um, yes, bitch has multiple personality disorder. We get it. <laughs> she does not have multiple personality disorder. Thank you very much. They don't even call that anymore. They stopped calling that years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Disassociative identity disorder. No, they don't call that now either. They what? stopped There's using that years name. ago. You're fucking lying. I'm not I, fucking with is, you. I have is, someone that has this. He, and like, oh. He is right. I just don't remember what the new name is. It's not DID anymore? Oh, my lord. Don't worry, Alex. They probably changed the new name, too. <laughs> I know. They probably changed it five times since the last time we talked about it. But <laughs> much like the idea. We here at Anime knows. Club After Dark don't mean to be complete dicks. We just find it kind of funny. <laughs> Um, no, so, uh, the whole thing is the main, two main characters, uh, there's the guy and the girl, um, she's crushing on him, and he doesn't realize he's crushing on her yet. Yeah, dense and the harem show, like, sure, or yeah. romance, yeah. It is kind of a harem, because he's the dumb. girl... Uh, they're both in drama club, and she pulls out different personalities, and he plays. Uh, he goes along with it by calling out a personality for her to bring up, uh, for her to do acting with. So he'll be like, "Oh, I wonder what Sundari Chun thinks about this, or what does Cool Chun think about that?" It, like it just goes like that. And like it's such a fun thing to see of her reactions and like just her being herself and them having cute moments do you it, it's just pure sugar do you know who the voice actor is for the uh female protagonist or female lead not a single idea <laughs> the reason i say that is because uh when you explained pseudo harem to me i was just like this actually kind of sounds interesting but to me this would rely very heavily on a really good voice actor to be pulling off different personality tropes as uh, uh, Saori Hayami. Yes, it's Saori right Hayami? Hayami? Bro, why did yeah. you lead with that? God damn it, Chinona! I, I figured I figured talking about this, yeah, you need a, a like a robust voice actor, and she was one of the ones that I was thinking about. It's like, yeah, that's her. Why don't you ever lead with the important parts, Chinona? Oh, this is who she's done. Yeah, no, she's She's uh, your she's, she's yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a good voice actor. Yes. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, man. no, she's she's been doing a fan fucking tastic for every single one of these personalities, okay, and so now it's, I'm definitely it's gonna check this amazing. Out. I'm 100% gonna check this out. Is it on Crunchyroll? Yep. Okay, perfect. <clears throat> I hate going to other streaming services. <laughs> as much as I dunk on Crunchyroll's app, it's kind of better than the rest, so... <laughs> Unfortunately. Mm. Mm, Amazon's app is actually pretty good. Especially with its UI customizability. I like Amazon's app on my phone. And the X-Ray stuff is really useful, yeah. But I love X-Ray. I think it's genuinely one of the best yeah, features. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. I feel like they should just add... But that's because it's stats for nerds type of shit, right? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, it literally is, though. But, like, it's so cool and useful. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely going to check out Pseudo Harem. Um, yeah. Since we talked about Sari Hayami, I just want to make a quick mention about Ramen Akaneko. Uh, okay. This is a 3D show done this season. I don't know the studio, but it's actually done really well. Uh, it's really? about it's about a world where cats can actually speak like Japanese or English. They can speak to humans and they can work and stuff. And uh, I originally so watched Hunter. it. <laughs> yeah, Monster Hunter. Yeah. Uh, well, I originally started watching this because I was like, "What is this show? Like Ramen Ake Neko? Like, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll watch it. It's something new." And I watched the first episode, and I'm like, is that motherfucking Rie Kugamiya? And I'm like, oh, I'm fucking, I'm here, dude. Rie Kugamiya is here. She plays a Sundari cat. Like, okay, all right. Oh, word? Word? Like, Hold ben. on. You're, you're, then you got me they interested. show the tiger, Krishna. It's voiced by Saori Hayami, baby. And I was like, we're in. We're watching this show. There's no way I'm backing out now. And as it turns out, this show is a fucking gem. I love it so much. Uh, it, it is done in 3D, but what they do is they highly stylize the cats to make it to look like the cats aren't in 3D. Like, they flatten out the um, the shapes and stuff to make it look like it's not 3D, but it is rendered in 3D. Uh, the humans are obviously rendered in 3D, and you can obviously tell, but it doesn't look that terrible. Uh, like, the animations don't look that janky. Um, 
I really wish I knew the studio doing Ramen Akaneko. Uh, uh, it is a oh. studio called E and H Production. E and H, fantastic job on this show. I like how you did it. It's a good way to use CG. Like it's it's not. There's a lot of movement. They they. It's literally about a girl who needs a job, and she goes and works at this ramen bar, which needs someone to uh to be a, basically a caretaker of the cats to like. Uh, comb out their extra fur so that it doesn't get in the ramen that they make. And that's it. That's the show, bro. It's just cute. The cats are cute. Uh, the, the freaking... The voice actors are amazing. <laughs> I I don't... There's no reason to, like, go check this show out other than it's cute. Like, I don't have to think too much about it. it I throw it on when I'm eating something or if I don't care too much and it's just like it's just it's on in the background but I am enjoying watching it and I look forward to seeing every new episode because one the opening is a fucking banger I love that opening song so much bro it's so good uh and just like the actual content of itself it's like a I wouldn't say it's an Ishike uh but it is definitely like a slice of life Oh wow! I, ENH have not done much. Uh, uh, that's because they were founded in. They, that's because they were founded in March of 2021. They their biggest had time hit is probably uh, Ninja Kamui. I heard Ninja Kamui was good until it wasn't. Like the, the the animation was good until it wasn't. Or rather, Ninja Kamui was good until the story got bad. <laughs> Still, <laughs> but apparently the animation was baller. Uh, I had a coworker telling me about that, and I didn't check it out because he was like, "Yeah, it's pretty good." And then halfway through, he was like, "Yeah, the story kind of sucks. The animation is still great, but man, the story sucks." And I was like, "Oh, that sucks." Because I care more about story than I do animation. Mm. Uh, apparently, E and H was founded by former Mappa director and animator Sung Ho Park. Oh my god! <laughs> explains why they're good at the CG. <laughs> yeah, ex- explains the good CG, I guess. <laughs> Got tired of Mappa's shit, and it's like, oh, fine, I'll do this shit myself. Hopefully he's not the guy that worked on Chainsaw Man, because then Chainsaw Man Season 2 would be absolute trash without him. Uh, no. Uh, this dude has worked on Garo Vanishing Line, God of High School, and Jujutsu Kaisen. Oh, shit. JJK is down the toilet now. Anyway. Yeah. (laughs) It's because of him! He left! (sighs) Yeah, I just wanted to mention that. Just quick side note, like it, I think it's great. People should check it out. Um, but uh, honestly, I can't tell you any actual redeeming qualities. It's a turn your brain off and just be happy that you see cats making ramen for people. It's cute. So if you're a cat it. person, check it out. Oh, a hundred percent. Check it out if you're a cat person. If you're not a cat person, I still think it's a good show to watch to just be like, yeah, that's pretty cute. Okay. Solid right. seven out of ten type of show, you know. All right. Close I guess up. that's uh. Yeah, it's a good place to end it. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Thank you, everyone, for dropping by to watch us talk about the things that we have been uh, watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff down below. If you like what you saw, want to see more, let us know down below uh, what you are currently watching as well and what you think of the things that we talked about uh, tonight. You can also check down below where you can find links to uh, all the stuff Anime Club After Dark does, as well as a link to our merch store where you can help us out there if you want. With that, I have been your host, Alex, and we will see you next time. Say goodnight, guys. Ah, it's over. I can sleep. It's finally over. I've been watching so much more anime. You guys don't even know. We know. We know. What are you watching? This season's so weak. That's why I'm like, I'm a lot more. (laughs) And that's on top of the other shows that are not even anime. (laughs) Anyway. Bye.